thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name. I wonder if you're glad to be in God's presence today. Can you celebrate God and give Him all the praise? Oh, yes, His presence is here. We have our mother in the house. Can you help us celebrate our mother? God bless you, Mom. Ah, you can do better than that. What a grace we have in the house. This evening I spoke with my father, your father, and then he was speaking, told me, son, I couldn't make it. And uh, he told me tomorrow, of course, on Sunday, we'll be with Place of Kings. <laughs> you apparently don't. <laughs> <The lion. laughs> yeah, I will be with you before in the morning, by 6 30, then it will wrap up by 8, and then it will be in the house. The city of David, 8 o'clock. Can you celebrate God? <laughs> and as usual, we decree the word, we send this word forth again. And that word is producing great things in the name of Jesus. Amen. While I came into the church, I was trying to settle down and just rest a little. Um, the, someone met me and said, I need to see you, sir. I was bothered because I, I needed to little, just rest a little. Counseling comes after mercy, after the day's service. And she said, no, I, I just want to share what God did. He said, I can't wait. I just have to tell you what God did. I said, okay, what did God do? So said, uh, during yesterday's meeting, I, I, after the old prayers, uh, we're going to touch some things. that Some things God told me to do, so we'll do that uh, before we close. As you said, uh, when you called for the category and you mentioned new beginning, something told me that is for me. And so she said she came out for it and um, she just made that prayer and, and she left. Made the vows and she left and went home. She said uh, she, she was trying to move uh, to a new apartment, which she had moved actually. She paid part of it. And uh, something told her, she, she, when she was sleeping, she just kept, the word kept ringing in her spirit, new beginning, new beginning, it's a new beginning. And then she woke up, new beginning in her head. And she said, what is wrong? And then something told her, call your uh, uh, cousin or uncle or so, and tell, her, tell him about the house. And he said, the man told me to help him pray for God to provide for him to complete one project. So, but the thing kept telling her, it's a new beginning, call him. And um, she called him and I said, uh, actually, um, I'm moving to my new house. And the man said, okay. Have you made payment? They said, ah, partly. How much is the total money? 200 and something thousand. So, okay, I'll get back to you. And as if it was a joke, she said she received an alert of 350,000. She said, I'm still trying to recover from that. He said, I don't have an idea how it happened. <laughs> somebody's testimony is next. Uh, the person is not responding. Somebody's testimony is next. Mommy, how much is, the, how much is that category? New beginning. Number eight stands for new beginning. And just 8,000. So when, many times when God wants to do something in your life, he tells you to take a step, and you're wondering about the step. What is 8,000 to 350,000 in less than eight hours? It started speaking. This night is your night. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 your voice is sounding like you're tired. This night is your night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And as I was celebrating with her, I just wanted to rest a little, and then another person came. And I said, what is wrong with these people? I want to rest. The young man said, I just need to tell you something. I said, what is it? Is it counseling? He said, no, I want to tell you what God did. I said, okay, I'd like to hear this one. <laughs> he, he had his leg swollen for months. Woke up and saw it like that, and it's been painful, and the leg all swollen. And she, he came during the week and asked for prayers. 
And I stood in the capacity and office of my father and I cursed it and then he left. He said, I want to let you know that as I said, go home. He said, water started coming out from the ledge and the pains all disappeared. Somebody said, God is touching me tonight. Are you ready for yours tonight? Somebody shout, God is touching me tonight. I'd like you to celebrate the honor of the church. Give him all the praise. He's the doer. And help me celebrate God's servant, my father. Can you celebrate the Bible? Can you give him all the Give God praise for my father. Just celebrate my father for me. Can you do it better than the younger than Amen. I celebrate the grace upon his life because it's on that grace I stand always. And anytime I want to speak over matters, I just step in the shoes of my father as a privileged son. <laughs> and when it comes out, it's with power. Father, we thank you. I'd like you to just worship him and give him all the praise tonight. Just say thank you, Father. Thank you. Just tell thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because your testimony is next. Can you just give him all the praise? Just give him all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Give him all the praise. I want to thank you, dear. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. Thank you, Jesus.
glorify your name. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who walk upon the winds. The one who measures the water of the sea in his palms. Oh, you are the one who can number the dust of the earth. You are the one with the deathless past and the deathless future. You began the beginning, Lord King of Glory. You are the rock of ages, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You go to war and you win. No one no God can contend with you. You are the one who make kings. You set up, up one and you bring down another. You are the God who changes time and seasons. You are the one who regulates the universe and control everything. You are the one who can measure the earth <laughs> with your purpose, Lord King of Glory. The heaven is your footstool. The earth, Lord King of Glory, I mean, you make your footstool and the heaven of God is your throne. You sit, O God, in the circle of the earth. Angels, O God, minister to you. You form them, O God, from the word of your mouth. Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We ask you, oh God, that you be praised and glorified. Lift up your voice and give him all the praise. Just thank him. Give him thanks. Give him all the praise. Thank him for the blessings. Thank him for the miracles. Thank him for the favor. Thank him for open doors. Thank him for open heavens. Give him praise for access to prayers. Thank him. Give him all the praise and give him all the thanks. Give him all the praise. Holy, my God. When I hear our sound Consider all Consider all The works that the hands of men The works that the hands of men I see I see the stars I see the stars I the and the spirit rest upon me to deliver oh God what you have for your people when you send your servant you have this day in mind therefore we pray to you oh God that you will show up oh God and let your power oh God be seen in this place today let there be instant miracles oh God let there be testimonies breakthroughs oh God and deliverance we bless you Jesus because we know you are in control take all the glory 
for we in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. testimonies in the house and we'll be having some time to, to hear those testimonies tonight is a night of winning battles night of victory it's a night to take back what belongs to you it's a night to settle matters so the devil tries to make you sleep knock him off tell him i just need this night and don't need distractions because if you allow god do in your life what he wants to do tonight throughout this month you'll be singing and dancing Amen. i said you'll be singing and dancing Amen. you'll be looking for people to tell your testimony Amen. you'll be too excited that you can't wait for the normal time you will say, when you, anybody sits close to you, you will say, I just want to tell you what God did. I'm looking for who to share my testimony with. If that is you, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. I'm just going to take you through a little short journey to get God's word. She gave you a very, very strong foundation to pray. And so don't leave the foundation and burst into the prayer section. No. I want you to follow me very keenly. Uh, if the devil tries to put sleep on your eyes, he's just about to cheat you. So you just stand up. Make sure you get this side of it because it's going to empower you to go for the next direction, uh, the next dimension. So when we begin to pray, uh, you'll be so loaded and that when you unleash at the devil, you have no space anymore around your life. In the name of Jesus. I quickly want to deal with understanding God's will. Understanding God's will. Understanding God's will. If you're not sitting properly, I'd like you to do that. If you sit properly because I want you to hear everything that God has for you and warm up as we begin to burst into prayers. First John chapter 5, verses number 14. First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. He heareth. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Fifteen. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. My God. This is our confidence. That we have in him he says if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and of course if he hears us we understand and know that our petitions are granted so i want to say something then that the point is that how do i know my request is lining up with god's will wow how do i know that my request is lining up with god's will is it the will of God that I remain sick for a while? Is he using it or using the pain to teach me some things? How do I know what the will of God is for my life by time? Many are times when we face some challenges and uh, you try some steps and it looks like you don't get answer. The devil tells you maybe it's not God's will for you to have it now. Have you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, so the devil comes and then somehow you, you're trying to figure out what is God's will for me now. Somebody lost a child and then they say God gives and God takes. Anyway, it's not scriptural and um, that is not God's way of doing things. He does not give and take. He said the blessings of the Lord 
it maketh rich and it has no sorrow. I saw somehow say maybe it's the will of God. So I, I see it, it, if you can just know what his will is for your life right now, as touching that matter, I think it gives you a strong confidence to approach it. If we ask anything, he says, according to his will, he heareth us. And of course, if he hears us, we know that our request is granted. There's a scenario about uh, a man who was uh, a leper. And then the man met with Jesus and uh, he was wondering if Jesus would be willing to save him. If it was God's will for him to be saved or to be healed. And we'll see Matthew chapter 8 verses number 2. Matthew chapter 8 verses number 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. If you are willing, he says, you can make me clean. And then Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. My God. If only I can find Jesus and ask him, Lord, is it your will, Lord God, that I get married now? Maybe I will have some confidence like this young man to ask for it. And because many times you can't find the Lord to say, Lord, is it your will that I should have it now? Is it your will that I should have the baby now? Uh, because you don't understand that part of it, it looks like uh, you are praying and asking God for something, yet you are expecting it not tonight, not this month, not this year, but somewhere close in the future. Somebody say, my blessing is coming tonight. Yeah, so I want to show you what it means to pray according to God's will. How to know what God's will is for your life, because once you know it, then you can take delivery of what belongs to you. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, so quickly, we just say, what is a will? What are the definitions of a will? I want to read three definitions, and then we group it together to find a very uh, suitable one. The first is the capacity or the capability of conscious choice and decision and intention. Okay? But I want to focus on the second. A feast and persistent intent or purpose. A will is a fixed, get it right, fixed and persistent intent or purpose. That the third one says, a letter document declaring a person's wishes according, uh, uh, regarding the disposal of his property when they die. A letter document declaring a person's wish regarding the disposal of their property when they die. So I want to combine two, um, the definition two and definition three together, and then you get the definition that I want you to understand. Uh, combining both of them, it reads this way. A fixed and persistent intent or purpose representing a person's wish documented with legal effect as regarding the disposal of his or her property at death. <laughs> uh, this is strong. If you follow me, something will break loose in your spirit tonight. And that when you when you burst into prayers, you, you will see yourself soaring in the spirit. So I want you to get it and get it right. A fixed, I repeat, a fixed and persistent intent or purpose representing a person's wish documented with legal effects as regarding the disposal of his or property at death. I want you to note three things here, or four, quickly. A will is fixed and it is and is the persistent intent of the testator. The testator is the one who creates the will, okay? Number two, it gains legal stance by the death of the testator. That means until the person who writes it, the person who owns the will dies, nothing can be claimed legally in the will. If a man writes a will, you can't claim it until he dies. <laughs> it is only enforced after the death of the testator. Do you get that one now? Is it clear? I talk to me back. Is it clear? 
Ah, okay, I think we'll be talking when I talk, you talk. So that we'll flow together. Okay, so it's fixed, it's persistent, cannot be changed. It gains like a stand by the death of the one who initiates it. Number three, it cannot be amended after death. A will cannot be altered after a man is dead. Let me give you an example. He, for instance, a man uh, wrote that all his will goes to a, a, a son of his. And only to discover that this son of his has been planning his death. In fact, gave him poison. And at the point of death, he realized that this young man that he has willed every of his property to is the reason for his pain. And before he said, ah, oh, ah, oh, change it, he fell down and died. Sir, irrespective of his wish uh, to change it, as long as he has not effected it, as soon as he's dead, no one can change it anymore. Am I, do I have lawyers here? Am I making sense? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, if it's correct, get it right. That means once a man dies, you can't utter his will, it's permanent. Well, even if he had intentions to change it, as long as he did not effect it while he was alive, when he dies, it's all over. Whether he was on his way to go and change it, and he died on the road, you can't touch it anymore. It's gone. It is permanent. It is settled. Number three, a will is the same as a testament. When we say testament, we mean will. Now, I want to show you why am I taking you through this journey. Hebrews 9, verses number 16. Hebrews 9, 16. For where there is a will and testament involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will and testament is valid and takes effect only at death, since it has no force or letter power as long as the one who made it is alive. Nobody say, I hear. Yes. You, you are not hearing me. Say, I hear. Yes. Now, <laughs> notice that God started writing his will from the foundation of the world. <laughs> and understanding that until <laughs> he dies, his children cannot lay claim to the will. <laughs> mm. Why? Because until the one who writes the will dies, you cannot effect the will. Therefore, God sent Jesus. <laughs> came to complete the details of the will. <laughs> God cannot die. In other words, his children cannot inherit anything. Because he wrote his will, but until he dies, it has no effect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, so because God looked at himself and saw that until he dies, these people cannot inherit anything. And they have to find a way to make the will legal for a children to be able to lay claim to his will. And so he figured out how to accomplish this. So first John, uh, John chapter 1, verse number 1 began to speak that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same word came in human flesh and took on mortality. Why? So that it can have the capacity to die. Hi, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so, when Jesus came, he, he took time to begin to write and to put things in order. And as he was putting everything in order, he was completing the details of the will. Yes. And when he was done, he knew to activate the will, he had to die. If he does not die, you have no right over the will. It's a useless document. It has no legal ground. It has no legal stand. And so Jesus had to die so that the will can become effective. <laughs> Somebody say, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and before he died, he made certain things clear. John chapter 17, verses number 23. And the glory, he says, which thou givest me, I have given them. Uh, somebody say, I receive it. Oh, you are not seeing it. Have you seen it tonight? Before he died, he wrote everything in the will. Everything that will 
unto me, I give it unto them, that they may be one, even as we are one. How in them and how in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So by Jesus' death, the will became a legal tender, claimable by you and me. And this is why we are offered the privilege to ask anything in the will in line with the provisions therein, and it shall be done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a book, this is a will. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? This is not a book. This is a will. The Old Testament, the New Testament. What is testament? Testament means will. Old will, new will. <laughs> Somebody say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all that God began to write from the foundation of the earth, he documented it in the will. And he called the Old Testament the old will. And then the new will. And then he said, when he was through with the old and the new, he has compiled everything in one. He went to the cross and died. And his death made this will active. I said, his death made this will active. If you find anything in this will, you can have it. Did you hear what I said? If you find anything in this will, you can have it. Somebody taking something tonight? Are you taking something tonight? his will. That's what is his will. Now no matter what is written in a will, if it is not understood, <laughs> it cannot benefit the older. If I write a will for you and you don't know what to do with it, you don't understand it, it's useless in your hands. Let me help you. Let this Bible talk to you right now. What did you hear? Nothing. Nothing. Because on the will, the will itself cannot speak. <laughs> Whatever is written in the will is useless if you also do not know it. Just as the will is useless if the testator is still alive. But if the testator dies and the will becomes active, if you don't lay claim to the will, if you don't understand it and hold on it, and engage the will, you also have nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. so. so instead of asking God what is your will, go and read the book, he's there. Yeah. Everything God wants to do, he has documented it in his will for you. You want to end barrenness tonight? Check what is written in the will. Uh -huh. Whatsoever is written in the will cannot be changed. Listen. Once a man dies who writes the will, the will is permanent, you can't change it. So even if God wanted to change anything, as long as he had written it and he had died, he can't change it anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is why the, what the blessings that God has for you tonight is concluded, is permanent, then you can do nothing about it. If you can take it, to the courtroom of heaven and say it is written in the will concerning my health. It is written in, my, in the will concerning my child conception. It is written in the will concerning this affliction. If you can find what is written here and bring it to the courtroom of heaven, guy, I can tell you your case is settled. Come, let us reason together. Bring forth your strong reason. What is it pointing at? Bring forth what is written in the will and show it to me. If you will ask anything according to what is written in this will, sir, it will be done. How many of you have a copy of the will in your hands? Uh, you, you don't have a copy? Uh, do you have a copy of your will? Can you raise it on Let me see. Oh, 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 let me see it up. Raise it, raise it, let me see it. Let me, let me see it. Some people don't even have the will. Are you ready to claim some things tonight? Yes, sir. Oh, no, I didn't hear you. Are you ready to claim some things tonight? Yes, ah. 
<laughs> so how do I claim what is written? And whatsoever, whatsoever you ask in my name, Jesus said, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. There are two things I want to try to understand there. I don't know what whatever looks like. But he repeated it again, said, if you ask anything, what does anything mean? Huh? What does whatever mean? Does it mean some things? What does it mean? Anything means just anything. Anything means whatsoever. It means that you have a blank check in the will. That if you ask anything, 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 it is written in the will. That if you ask anything, it is done for you. Imagine that your father was given licenses and uh, when I died, he wrote in his will that if my son asks anything in my name, give it to him. No matter how much he comes for, if he asks for one billion, one trillion, ten trillion, give it to him. And you know that your father wrote it in the way and it's everybody has to obey. It. What will you ask for? <laughs> what will you ask for? Because if you say anything, you go there and ask for 10,000, they give you 10,000. If you go there and ask for 1 million, they give you 1 million. But if you have the heart to ask for a billion, they give you 1 billion. If you have the heart and if I to ask for 10 trillion, they'll give you 10 trillion. So it's not limited by anything, it's limited by you. Anything scripture says means that whatsoever you have the capacity, the heart to ask for, you have it. If you will say this night, Lord, heal these eyes tonight, then you will have it tonight. Uh, did you hear what I said? You will have it tonight. If you say, Lord, barrenness end tonight, then you will have it tonight. He said, if you ask just anything in my name, it will be done. Ah. Uh, how much believers come before God and say, God can do all things, but that all things is limited in their minds. When so God can do all things, the, in their mind, in their subconscious, it's actually limited to certain things. Because they don't think that God can do certain things. Even though they claim that God can do all things, but that all things has a limitation in their mind. And so I, I come before God and leave the blind eye because I've concluded that this one is a close case. I say, oh God, touch me and give me finance. But I have a problem with it. I said, I conclude because doctor said there cannot be done anything. No medical assistance, no, nothing can be done medically. So I conclude that this one is a manageable case. I'm managing it now. So God, forget this one. Let's deal with this other one. Whereas you claim that God can do all things. If God can do all things, why are you limiting him on some things? Why have you told him to leave this side? Let's focus on this one. This one I've resolved that this one will not be solved. We are managing it. And let's, let me be managing this one. You focus on this side. If God can do all things, sir, don't put a barrier on what he can do in your life tonight. It means tonight you can believe him for something special. It means tonight you can, you can, you can stop managing that circumstance, that situation, and say, Lord God, I'm done managing this thing right now. I'm taking what belongs to me. Is there somebody here who's ready to take something from God? Are you ready to pray tonight? I'm preparing you because when it comes to prayer, you have to open your heart and pray yourself to God. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, it is the will of God for you to have a miracle. That is why I gave my father the word that the prophetic word for the month is the month of praise. That means throughout this month, you are expected to dance. Yes, to be dancing and dancing. When one testimony is coming, you are trying to, to testify, another one meets you up. And you are trying to testify about the other two ones, and the next one comes, and you are just saying, God, I don't understand what is happening. I don't understand. I don't want to dance. That is your case. That is your testimony. In the name of Jesus. You have to understand. Then he says that if you ask anything, in my name, that means the name of Jesus is the gateway. Of course, you can't use that name if you have not given your life to him. 
And that's why you must turn to him so that you can have access to his name. So the name is the ticket through which we ask. Remember, a will cannot be altered after death of the testator. Therefore, it is not possible for the truth, uh, <laughs> for this truth to be contested by the devil. This Bible cannot be contested by the devil. If you know what is written and you declare it, the devil will leave instantly. The devil will only fight or try to stop you when he believes that you don't know what you are saying. So he will contest with you and try to see if you believe it. But once he knows that you are sure, he knows he's in trouble. Legally he's in trouble. Before heaven he's in trouble if he doesn't back out. Somebody say, know what is written. I didn't hear you say, know what is written. Be careful. Jesus warned his disciples. He said, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees. And that of Herod, Mark chapter 8, verses number 15. Why? Yeast contaminates. Don't miss the word of God, which is the bread of life with yeast. Don't miss it, because it has a way to pump it and make it light. Oh, God heals, but not this kind of sickness. This one is, this, you, you, don't, you don't pray for this one. This one is beyond prayers. No! Oh, God heals, but medically, this is the condition. You have to go by this condition and by this condition. No! God did not even expect for his children to live in sickness. He said, health is your heritage. The children take healing as their bread. Healing is that children's bread, he says, because sons live in divine health. Because when you hear my father say, for 10 years I've never tasted drug, you understand? It, sons live in divine health. Somebody say, I'm a son. I'm a son. Say, sickness cannot find a place in my life. Find if that is you, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. So let me quickly look into the word of God and find out what is in the will. Healing and divine health is in the will. Hallelujah. Healing and divine health is in the way. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Somebody say, we are. We are means that is past tense. It's written in past tense, not you will be healed, but you were healed. So all you need to go is to go to this scripture, go to this will, and pick your healing out of it. Somebody's ready to be healed tonight? Are you ready to be healed tonight? Yes, so you pick your healing because he said you were healed. Matthew chapter 8, verses number 17, he said, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities, infirmities talk about diseases, took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Somebody say, he took it. <laughs> Shout it louder, he took it. <laughs> they gave Jesus 39 strokes of cane. Flogged him 39 times. Actually, it was going to be 40, and error stopped it. Why? Because it was divine. It was calculated. Medical researchers have been able to put things together in the medical field. They've been able to gather a, a group, all the sickness and diseases in the world, and they were able to group them into 39 chronologies, meaning 39 broad groups. So all the sickness in the world today, have been grouped and it fell into 39 exactly the number of stripes Jesus took. That means every came for a family group of disease and sicknesses. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it was not it was not gain saying it was not a mistake, it was divinely calculated that he must take 39 strokes of the cane to represent the 39 chronology of sickness and diseases in the world. So none of them is left out. Whatsoever, therefore, our God has not planted in you, it's given way tonight in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the name of that sickness, it leads tonight in the name of Jesus. I say it leads tonight in the name of Jesus. The second it deals with again, in the world is within barrenness. Barrenness was dealt with in the will. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses number 14. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses number 14. Thou art, thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you. 
or among your cattle. Somebody say, I hear you, Lord. Why did God say male of and female? Now, man, guys, when we talk about barrenness, we point it to the women. And so we say the woman is barren. But the Bible says male and female, not by mistake. There are men who, by medical uh, stance, cannot have father a child. So you could call them barren men. Oh, yeah. Have you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you say, a low span count or whatever count or no count, whatever it is. The uh, Bible calls them male and female, meaning that no male is permitted to be barren to no female is permitted to be barren. That means that as a man, you can claim your divine healing and you can claim fruitfulness on this ground. As a woman, this night you can claim your babies because the Bible says it is written in the will that you are not permitted to be barren. Not even your cattle, your animals is permitted to be barren. Somebody shout, Lord! Solomon chapter 4 verse number 2 is still written in the Bible thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shown which came up from the washing wherefore everyone bear twins somebody is collecting twins tonight <laughs> I, I thought you would shout that amen louder if someone is collecting his twins tonight so everyone bears twins and none is barren among them The days of barrenness are over. Yes, I don't like it. The days of barrenness are over. They are over. They are over. In the name of Jesus. Psalms 1, 1, 3, verses number 9. He make the barren woman to keep a house. Hallelujah. And to be a joyful mother of children. Somebody say, Lord, thank you. Say, it's in the will. I'll shout it louder, it's in the will. Oh, what else? It dealt with poverty and shame. Oh, the will dealt with poverty and shame. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verses number 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that true, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. If you catch it all the shout, do you hear what I'm saying? They yes. said Jesus became poor that so that you, through his own poverty, can become rich. Somebody said, Therefore, I cannot be poor. Yes. If he paid for poverty, why should I not take it up again? Oh, I can never be poor. Shall be louder. I can never be poor. Let me hear you shout one more time. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 14. Galatians 3 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What is the blessing of Abraham? Abraham was so blessed, he was richer than a nation. Isaac was so blessed, he was blessing cattle, blessing gold, blessing silver. He was so blessed that nations envied these people. So when God says the same blessing of Abraham comes upon you through the covenants. Through what is written here, then it means that the devil cannot put poverty upon your life. Amen. Somebody say, Never again. Never Shout the louder, say, Never again. Never again. Is there anything around your life that you've been battling with? This is the night to shake it off. Amen. Oh no, your human does not sound like it. This is the night you can be healed right now. Amen. This is the night God is touching you on the spot. Amen. This is the night that addict is leaving you. Amen. That recurrent addict is going now. Amen. This is the night that I issues, that I pain is leaving. Amen. This is the time, this is the night Apatis B is leaving you. Amen. This is the night that HIV is leaving. Amen. This is the night your legs receive strength, your ankles receive strength to walk. This is the night that that pain is over. Whatsoever has held you bound, it is leaving right now. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? No, no, are you ready to pray? All right, I'd like you to jump up on your feet. <laughs> when you
you pray with understanding, the devil becomes afraid. The devil does not fear your shaking of the head. You can shake your head and have a headache. And the devil will just be sitting somewhere answering, Amen, 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 for you. I mean, oh, Father, hey, you, you end up with etiquette. And nothing will change. Because the devil knows you don't know anything. You don't know what you're saying. I remember when I was a young child, I was very young then. Maybe around eight, uh, nine years old or so. We went to a camp. My, my, my dad, uh, the people came to take over the camp because they had a program. And so we had to move to the inner side of the camp. And we're there alone in this big hall and just these uh, double beds all over the place and then we were sleeping we didn't know when my dad left he left and um, we were alone and there was light thank god <laughs> and then my sister woke up my head sister woke up at night and she shouted she woke everybody she said i had a terrible dream i said what is it he said i saw one spirit it was coming he said yeah, jack i love my, my bucket i said we should have your bucket again <laughs> So she was so afraid. He said, no, let's pray. So we prayed and prayed, and then everybody slept. Only me, I could not sleep again. As I lay down to sleep, I said, my heart did not, I, I didn't sleep off. My eyes only touched each other. I was pressed. I struggled, struggled to wake up. In my band, I was pleading, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I managed to wake. As I woke up, ah, I said, should I wake them? I said, no, if I wake anybody, now it's night vigil. Nobody will sleep again. First of all, you cover a dream. Now you're saying you can't sleep. <laughs> so I said, let me let them see. So I prayed the blood of Jesus. I covered the bed with the blood of Jesus. The wall, if you can see, that everywhere became red. <laughs> I covered everywhere with the blood of Jesus. My spirit, my soul, my body, my clothes, wrapper, everything. I painted everywhere with the blood. My dear, I didn't sleep. Oh. My eyes touched each other. They came. Ah, I struggled again. Jesus, 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 brother. Ah. I woke up. I said, what is this now? I thought I prayed. <laughs> so I prayed again. I covered everywhere with extra blood. <laughs> I could see the blood dripping on the wall. Everything. As soon as I closed my eyes, they came again. Ah! I said, this one is serious. <laughs> as I struggled from that uh, oppression that night, I just woke up. The moment I woke up, something entered into me. I don't know where it came from. I just, suddenly I said, ah, I am in God and I am in Christ Jesus, and Jesus is in God. Therefore, if anything must touch me, you must first kill Jesus uh, and kill God. Bring Jesus out of God and kill Jesus. Then you can bring me out. I said, because no one can kill Jesus and no one can kill God, nothing can touch me. I didn't say amen, I slept. It was the next day I remembered what happened by night. So what happened when I was praying and covering with the blood of Jesus? The devil knew I was fearful. I didn't know what I was saying. So as soon as I slept, he slapped me once again. You, you open your Bible and put it under your head. You want to sleep, you open Psalms. Any scripture you like, open and sleep. You see, the devil will beat you. You remove the Bible, beat you, put your head back. <laughs> because this word, until you speak it, it has no life. You don't think Bible says that, hey, hey. He, got it. he will slap you. You understand what I'm saying? He will devil carry Bibles around. So he did not he know the power is in the spoken word. When you speak it out, when the devil knows you know what you are saying, you don't confront barrenness. Oh, Father, oh, Lord, let this barrenness go. No, the devil will not answer you 10 years, you'll still be waiting. What happens? You pick scriptures, it is written. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It is written in making the, the, uh, the barren woman to keep her home. It is written, none shall be barren among you. Not the male, not the female. So even now, he's covered in the wheel. It is written, you keep bringing bring scripture that you shall bear twins. Lord God, I receive my twins. It is that anger. You rise and say, Satan, you can't trouble me anymore. Your time is over in my life. I take my child in the name of Jesus. It's when you come with that revelation that the devil loses his grip over you. When you come and discover in the scripture, you saw what Papa said. When he discovered the scripture and knew that he cannot be sick, that was the last day. After 10 years, no drugs. Why? He found something in the way. He found something. What have you found? Just pray. Mama, Papa, you get that? You know what happen. You pray for six years. It's like God is sleeping. God is not sleeping. The devil knows you don't know what you're saying. That is why it's tormenting. What have you found in this scripture concerning your life? What have you found in this scripture concerning your health? 
If you find something tonight, if you took something tonight, it's time to go in aggressively and say, Satan, you leave now, not tomorrow, now. Somebody say, you must go now. No. Uh, what is that affliction, that ethic that has been around, oh my, just reoccurring, reoccurring, it's time for you to go. Somebody say, today. today. I don't know what it is for you, but I want you to pray like you've never prayed before. You lift up your voice and cry out with the Lord and say, Father, Silently, Father, I thank you because I heard it. When it was time to address the matter, Lazarus, come forth! Don't stop, small. You read your Bible, you see Jesus with a loud voice, cast the devil out. You are saying, Oh, Father, everything that the devil has not planted, come out, uh, come out in the name of Jesus. Lord, you didn't plant this in my. You are not serious. The Bible says, Knock, and it shall be opened. Somebody say knock. No. Okay, then he began to describe the knock. He said, well, if somebody comes to your house and uh, you want something from him, and uh, you want to, the friend to help you, and uh, he says, no, I can't help you, my child is asleep. I said, but if the man begins to hit the door, what more harder? He said, at a point, the man will say to himself, instead of me to have this child wake up, why not just give this man anything? He said, open the door and say, take anything you like and get out of here. It's aggressive knock. And actually that word used there means crow. Crow means to be persistent, to be aggressive, to make aggressive, persistent requests. Aggressive, persistent requests. So when you're addressing matters like this, you don't just go around and say, oh, Father, Baba, hey, Baba. No, it with force. Tell them you go now. You see how that is addressing issues. When he's talking about some things, you see the force that comes in. Why? Because you understand it's spiritual warfare. You are uprooting and repositioning. So when it comes to prayer like this, you don't sit down on your hand like this. You just pray all the night, not a result. You must come into the spirit and be angry in your spirit. Somebody say, be angry. Be angry. Be angry at that circumstance. Be angry at that situation. And then with a loud voice, decree over it. You don't do nothing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you something. Daddy was sharing the testimony of how he was stooling blood. At the time, mommy, Abi, and uh, she, mommy was so disturbed about it one day, he just finished defecating and the whole place was filled with blood. He said, and he was hungry in his spirit and turned and said, never again. At first, that was the end of it. You don't pray 
to him and said, never again. No, never again. And that was the end. It's with aggression to take what belongs to you. On the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and men of violence take it by force. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion, that are relaxed in Zion. Say, woe unto them. Because they will just see, see, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. With that pressure, sir. You don't just pray. You're praying this night. You're just wasting the night. Come on now. With all you have heard, you want to just let it go? It's time to settle some things. Forget who is praying. Forget any other person. You didn't come for them. You came for yourself. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Shout out loud and say, yeah. yeah. Now, you're going to pray that prayer again, but I want you to pray with specific specification. A minute, when you are saying, Lord God, hear my body. No, tell him exactly what you want. Everything has a name. If it's sickness, whatever, what is the name of that sickness? Cast it out. What is the name of it? Cast it out. Jesus will always say, what is thy name? Then he call the name, you foul spirit, you spirit of blindness, you spirit of this. You call the spirit out from your life. So there are things you want settled. Don't, don't pray general prayers. Oh, Father, let my family be blessed. Be blessed how? Tell him exactly what you want to see happen. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Are you ready to pray tonight? Are you ready to pray tonight? You're going to lift up your voice one more time. Say, Father, whatsoever you have not planted in my life. You know that thing. You know it by name. You know it by name. You will call it after you finish now. Say, Father, it is all planted in the name of Jesus.
The prayer dimension is different. You have to settle matters tonight. You will have to settle it. I don't want you to leave any stone torn tonight. If you are having a challenge that is affecting your entire family, this is your night. This is the night to take charge. Say, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. Say, I found none. If God will find one man who will stand in their family and say no to the devil, no to this affliction, who will not just liberate himself, liberate the entire family. One man is enough. God finds one man in any family, the entire family will be liberated. The problem with many families is that all of them are sleeping. Not one is standing. Even when one goes to all night, he can't even stand. <laughs> the Bible says God neither sleep nor slumber. The devil does not sleep. He does not have the capacity to sleep. Your enemy, the adversary, is roaming from one place to another continuously for thousands of years. He can't sleep. He does not have the capacity to sleep. You who they are fighting, you can't stay awake for three hours. Something is wrong. <laughs> Somebody say something is wrong. <laughs> this is not time to be tired. This is not the time to be tired. This is the night you take, take stand, your stand in warfare and break certain things. Why? Because the prophetic word has gone ahead of you. The, the, word, the prophetic word for this prayer meeting is what? Recover all. Why? Because once you recover all, you must come into praise. You can't recover and not share songs and not sing a new song. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, what happened? We were like them that dream. It was like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. <laughs> and everyone said, the Lord has done great things for them. Yeah. See, that is your testimony after this. Yeah. They will look at your family and say, can anything good come out of this family? Yeah. And you will look at them and say, God has turned our captivity around. Yeah. Because when the Lord visits a man, it looks like a dream when it starts happening. This is the night you settle it. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Now we're going to engage the mystery of praise. Uh, for those who are around on Thursday, you understand what I'm saying. Can you give the Lord a shout right now? Okay. You are still, now that means you are seeing the spirit. Okay, I will just do a little introduction so that the rest of them can join you so that they can.